This antenna is most unusual antennas I ever seen. It's supposed to work on 80 to 10 meters and its name is W3 EDP Junior. It's like a 10 meter long piece of wire fed by 2.5 meter long windows line. And this is supposed to be multi-band HF antenna and I'm very excited to test this antenna in the field in this beautiful Baltic Sea coast as it really works so nice as it looks like. The original W3 EDP antenna was first described in the QST magazine back in 1936 so it's uh, 86 years old now wow so and the original w3 edp antenna was directly coupled to the transmitter tank coil and the counterpoise was connected to the end of the coupling coil nearest the tank coil as shown in this picture which i borrowed from the electronicsnotes.com and what is interesting that the counterpoise wire was just laying in the on the ground in the shack of the author in the room and the radiating wire was poking out the window somewhere the antenna i hold in hand today is quite a different animal to my mind the radiating wire has got no counterpoise but it's fed via the ladder line or twin lead or window line you you call it whatever you want it reminds me more the classical zep antenna or zeppelin antenna the author of the zep style w3 edp antenna is uh, Jose Campione, Victor Alpha 3, Papa Charlie Juliet from Canada. And I found uh, this description in the nonstopsystems.com website. Very interesting website, by the way. So Jose, Victor Alpha 3, Papa Charlie Juliet, uh, elaborated three versions of the, of the modern incarnation of the W3 EDP. So it's a full size which remotely reminds the original w3 edp antenna in a way that if you take the overall length of the all wire used in this antenna you'll get 85 feet and the rest the other side of the twin lead is 17 feet uh, and which is you know the length of the radial in the w3 edp original antenna. I stick to the theory that this is a feeding line, not like, you know, of Santa Fe, this is a feeding line. Victor Alpha 3 Papa Charlie Juliet also developed a half size of this antenna. Uh, the uh, radiating element is 10.2 uh, meters or 33.5 feet and the twin lead feeding line is just 2.6 meters instead of 5.2 meters in the, in the original. So, today we are dealing with the junior version. My mast holder is already in place and this is Soda Beam's tactical mini mast, 6 meter long. And I'm going to use it as a support for W3 EDP junior antenna. It's a very lightweight mast. This mysterious little tiny multiband 80 to 10 meters antenna. I'll fix the, the, um, the feeder part, which is 2.5 meter long, uh, to the mast, to the pole. It's going to be kind of a partially vertical, partially sloping. Indeed, a variety of inverted L antenna. And this antenna needs to be fed through the 4 to 1 balloon and then RF choke or one-to-one -one anon. If not, then it doesn't tune very nicely. And of course, this antenna needs 
a tuna. Without the tuner, it won't work. I use this gardener's wire all the time to quickly fix anything to anything. <laughs> so, like antenna wire to, to the mast. It's very convenient. Now, I need just to elevate this pole. It's extremely lightweight pole. It, I don't know, it's maybe a few hundred grams. It weighs no more than a few hundred grams. And it nicely fits into this holder. Originally, this holder is designed for the beach, uh, beach umbrella or something like that. And it drives good into different sorts of soil. This is the sand and it's, it, it's okay, it stands quite firmly. This way would be good. This wire winder is sold by Sota Beams. The problem is they, they're running out of it very often. So if you're lucky, you buy it. All the arrangements done. So this is, this is feeding point. This is mast, 2.5 meters of feeding line. Then another 3 meters of wire goes up to the top of the pole. And then another end of the wire slopes down right there into these nice bushes. Actually, we have now inverted L kind of an antenna fed by a short piece of Windows line. Windows line, 450 ohms of impedance. At the bottom we have impedance what we have and we will see in a moment. Lots of light on the seaside, but anyway, here we see that the impedance on uh, 3.6 megahertz frequency is 160 ohms, but it also shows a huge capacitive reactance. So it means, of course, this antenna is too short for 80 meters, but we will see how uh, my KX2 tuner will manage with it. Making the long story short, here is the table of all the impedances and reactances as they were displayed on my Nano VNA. So we can see that the highest impedance was found on 80 meter band, reaching 160 ohms with the highly capacitive reactance of minus 404 ohms. So, and the lowest impedance was found on 15 and 10 meter bands, being 13 and 14 ohms correspondingly. So, uh, the reactances, they were also not peaking really, really very, very high, nor very, very low, except of the 80 meter band. And as we're doing the impedances, so, and the standing wave ratio, was also neither extremely high nor extremely low. So all this sounds like good news with the fact that we are approaching now the practical testing with the antenna tuner exercise. And now, so guys, guess, will it tune or will it not? On 3.66 uh, megahertz and let's see. Yeah, one to one, perfect. So, Elecraft KX2 tuner tuned this antenna made of 2.5 meter of open wire line and another 10 meters of wire sloping down into the bushes on 80 meters. Wow. Yeah, okay, I don't know about the efficiency, who knows, but if you can tune it, then you can always hope for a contact. 40 meter band. Let's choose kind of a ooh, 7.3 and tune. Yeah, 1.1 straight ahead. Oh, Dutch station. Okay, now let's go for 10 megahertz. Yeah, took half a second, one to one. Next, 
14 megahertz 20 meter band around the QRP frequency tuning here yeah, one to one no problems G0 DJF United Kingdom on the seaside absolutely wonderful clean air no QRM nothing 17 meter band let's tune one to one again perfect 21 megahertz 15 meter band tuning done one to one perfect on on 15 meters 12 meter band let's see and yeah one to one again perfect 28 megahertz 10 meter band and see what happens and this happens one to one perfect i'm amazed so Elecraft kx2 tuner automatic tuner tuned the w3 edp junior antenna so to say modified by Victor Alpha 3 Papa Charlie Juliet Lima Yankee 2 Hotel Stroke Portable Lima Yankee 2 Hotel Stroke Portable over over uh, Lima Yankee 2 what is your phone call? Lima Yankee 2 Hotel Stroke Portable Lima Yankee 2 Hotel Stroke Portable Okay, hello, thank you very much. You are 59, 5 by 9. I'm testing new antenna for my YouTube channel. Roger, Roger, you're okay, 73 and 44, charge out. Okay, 73, 44. Okay, 73, Delta Lima 3, Delta Lima Portable. This antenna requires a 4 to 1 balloon to work properly. Normally, the different sources of literature or internet sources, they advise that the 4 to 1 balloon should be current type or Guanella type 4 to 1 balloon. I tried Guanella balloon and I tried made in China somewhere very cheap voltage or Rutroff balloon and uh, together with the one-to-one -one RF choke it works really nice uh, I've tried it I've tested it with the 200 ohms resistor connected right here and it transforms does the transformation job perfectly no problems I don't know what kind of toroid is here but it's uh, it showed on my test with the with the uh, resistor it showed very good SWR like 1.5 or 1.1 across from 3.5 to, to 28 megahertz so uh, I think uh, well maybe Guanella current balloon is better but it's bigger it's bulkier you need to use two toroids to make a proper current a proper Guanella balloon so I think uh, the voltage balloon could be used nicely too
unusual CW is probably using the Vibroplex pedal, I think. Let's check how about the uh, common mode current on the at the radio side. If really the com combination of uh, uh, 4 to 1 voltage balloon, which is officially not recommended for such purposes, and a ref choke or 1 to 1 current balloon, anon, uh, actually, how does it work in preventing common mode current to get into my radio which i don't want of course to happen all right i clamp it right down here uh, this is a ref probe my my homemade uh, a ref probe uh, very good it's not calibra calibrated it's not kind of a precise measuring device it's just you know to get orientation whether you have a common mode current uh, or whether you're not but it's very very useful indeed and it's uh, there's a separate video on my channel if you're interested please go uh, go to one of the playlist transceivers and gadgets and and you'll find it there and there is a link in the description by the way to make things easier i'm transmitting full 10 watts and now let's see you see no the meter doesn't move at all it means there's no common mode current at all at my radio let's go to 80 meter band which is most which was most complicated you know the antenna is too short and the, the the reactance is so high that you never know what what could be 10 watts all right here we see some we see some but it's like it's twice as less of uh, a ref uh, than it would be over there, over there before the choke, right after the four to one balloon. Let's clamp it right here. I'm transmitting now. You see? You see full scale, full scale right after the uh, right after the four to one voltage balloon. And this is natural, okay, because voltage balloon doesn't uh, doesn't make any any RF choking, and, and so, so the current the currents are uh, uh, unbalanced. But that's fine. That's why this RF one to one RF choke is used to. This is also my own my own design and my own construction, and there is a separate video on this also. Anything, guys, you see it's all in separate videos on my channel so if you're interested go there and take a look so on 20 meter band excellent no rf common mode current at all the system's working Elecraft kx2 tuner tunes this antenna on all the bands absolutely from 80 to 10 uh, combination of uh, voltage uh, 4 to 1 balloon with one to one RF choke makes the uh, common mode current negligible, negligible on all bands, really making no troubles at all, neither for my transceiver nor for the operating CW, nothing at all.
statue in Curacao. Perfect, thank you Stuart. So summing up this antenna proved to be working pretty nicely. Well, I made a few contacts on 40, on 20 and on 17 meter bands and I got uh, normal reports like 5.7, 5.5, 5, 5.9 even on 40 meters. Propagation today was so-so. I, I have not made um, no contacts on 80 meter band but well it's uh, it's still uh, too early for 80 meter band Elecraft KX2 tuner tuned pretty well it actually tuned very well uh, this antenna on 80 meters like one to one it's very nice and interesting project would I would I put it on 12 meter mast then it would be an entire vertical so then I think it would work real as a DX antenna. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm very, very pleased with this experiment. I'm pleased with, the, with how this antenna was performing. I've made few contacts. I had great fun uh, with this antenna, with the seaside. It's a little bit too cold, you know, it's already not hot anymore. It's just uh, plus uh, 14 degrees Celsius at the moment and windy. So I think it's time to wind up before I caught cold. Anyway guys, that's it for today. Please leave your comments in the comment section. Uh, if you may be using this type of antenna too, what is your experience? I'm very interested in, you know, in your opinion on that. So please leave a message. Otherwise, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Peace and victory for Ukraine. See you in my next videos. 73. This is Linus Limayanki 2 Hotel.